Hey there, I'm Christina Johnson, Transformational Nutrition Coach, and I have a guest host and friend with me today, Karen. Um, we'll each introduce ourselves in a minute, but we're really excited today to team up and talk to you all about how what you're eating and just food in general affects your skin. So I know that for me, and I'm sure for you too, a lot of our clients are kind of surprised by the fact that things like acne or redness, rosacea is affected by what we eat, but there's a definite link there. So we'll talk to you about what some of the most common foods are that cause issues with your skin. Um, Karen has like a really cool system to figure out like the clues your face is giving you to help figure out what might be causing those skin issues, so she'll talk about that. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit too about how to just create a, a realistic plan for the holidays that will minimize the impact on your skin and just overall feeling good and, and maintaining your weight as well. So, um, if you don't know me, I guess I'm Christina Johnson. I'm a transformational nutrition coach. I have a private health coaching practice and I typically work with women who are looking to just create a healthier lifestyle without dieting or without relying on prepackaged foods or supplements or pills or anything like that. We just figure out how to eat healthy that becomes their new normal lifestyle. And, and people are looking to lose weight and have more energy and just feel better. So, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, I'm Karen Grazier. I'm a licensed esthetician in Nebraska, but I also have a holistic certification. So I really specialize in looking at um, the client as a whole, what's going on in their skin and what is the root cause of those. Like Christina was saying, a lot of it can be linked back to your diet um, and just other things going on in your lifestyle. It's not necessarily just the skin, but what's going on elsewhere that can lead to certain skin conditions. So I really specialize in that and helping clients find um, alternatives to the more traditional um, cosmetic procedures and things like that. Yeah, I think Karen and I met maybe a couple of years ago, I would say, and I just love like we both take that more holistic approach and really trying to get to the root of the issue. Um, you know, there there's usually some reason why we have some kind of imbalance or some kind of symptom going on in our body. And the more we can figure out what's causing it and fix that root issue, then it just makes it so much easier to look and feel better. So before we get started, if you know anyone else that would be interested in this information, will you either tag them or just share the video so we can spread the word and help more people have a great looking skin these holidays? Um, but so I guess I'm curious. I know that as an esthetician that you see a lot of clients regularly throughout the mm -hmm. year. So I'm curious if this time of the year you actually notice a difference in your client's skin. I do, and it's funny because my regulars that have been with me since I opened my practice five years ago, now they know what's going on in their skin. So we'll talk a lot about uh, one of the big things we see this time of year is those little tiny bumps that will show up on your forehead. They're not necessarily pimples, but they're there and what's going on with them. And a lot of times that can be linked directly back to sugar in your diet. So this is a lot of times candida, which is yeast growing in your gut. And then yeast feeds off of sugar. So if you're intaking all that extra sugar this time of year, you might start to see those little bumps show up on your forehead. Um, and I always tell my clients, like, clean up the diet a little bit, maybe a little less pumpkin pie, <laughs> extra water, um, and those tend to go away as soon as the holidays are over. Yeah. yeah. Are there other changes that you notice this time of year? Um, in the skin, yeah, especially like linked to diet, um, increase in sugar, like I said, that um, forehead breakouts. If you're eating things you don't normally eat, like I know a lot of times, you know, me and my husband especially, we can be pretty good throughout the year and then it's like, oh, well, the holiday, we just had two family Thanksgivings this last weekend. Yeah. So it's like, okay, my body's in taking all this extra dairy that I don't normally eat or you know, the extra sugar and stuff like that. So a lot of times if it's dairy, you'll start to see um, breakouts like around your cheek area and things like that. Um, the other thing you can start to see is alcohol, like extra alcohol consumption. Obviously alcohol is gonna help dehydrate you so your skin might start to look a little dull and lackluster. Okay. Um, if you have rosacea, it can oftentimes help um, activate it a little mm -hmm. bit. So you might notice a little extra redness in your cheeks if you've had a little extra wine that day or something yes. like that. Yes, I can definitely tell when I have more wine than I typically do that it does show up in my cheeks, especially they just look a little redder. Um, so you kind of mentioned like you dropped these little hints. So what would you say are the top foods that are most problematic for people in their I, skin? I would say um, dairy. Christine and I were just talking before we went live. I think you said it was something like 75% of people. There's a doctor that thinks may that people may have some sort of dairy mm -hmm. intolerance. So 
dairy, a lot of times you may not realize it, like you just have all oh, this little extra breakout here or something like yeah. that, but dairy for sure, sugar for sure, and then alcohol. Hydration is huge, so if you're dehydrated, if you're drinking more than you normally do, um, that's going to show up in your skin quite a bit. Yeah. I think we all know, I mean, especially sugar and alcohol, we know can have some consequences on our body. <laughs> I think the one that sometimes, at least some of the people that I work with, are surprised by is dairy. They don't really realize just what, what kind of impact it can have. Or just that in general, that those foods can show up as symptoms on your face. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of little telltale signs that once you get to know your body and get to know your diet, you're like, oh, if I, you know, maybe had a little too much of this and now my skin's showing it or something like that. Yeah. Which is kind of cool because it's like this outward sign that your body's not tolerating that food. So yes, it's showing up on your skin, but it's also probably causing other inflammation in your body in ways that you may not know, but long term could have some more serious consequences. And so... You know, we never like to get that acne or redness or anything like that, but it is just a sign that there's something going on that we need to address. Yeah, there's a lot of, I use a system called um, skin mapping. So it's yes. kind of like your face. I love hearing <laughs> Your face <laughs> is like a map to what's going on in your body. And typically it starts like um, your digestive tract is kind of like down here in this area and kind of mm -hmm. comes up. Um, so if you think of your nose as the very beginning of your digestive tract, so like the back of your throat and it kind of spreads out and up through here, um, and then your mouth being, if you're having, um, issues at the end of your digestive tract, um, your mouth, you may show up with like pimples right around your mouth and things like that. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting how that, and then I think a lot of people now have caught on to like hormonal issues being more in like the beard area yes. and things like that. So it's yeah. good to know to kind of keep in mind. I always tell my clients, just be mindful of what you're eating, what you're taking in and things like that. And just be kind of conscious of what's going on and maybe you can kind of see a link mm -hmm. to what might be causing it. Yeah, so just to clarify, so you're saying that if we're having issues in our digestion in some way, then that can show up on that yes. area of our skin. Absolutely, okay. yeah. Are there any other like areas of our skin that show different things? Um, a lot of times, like all over dehydration. Um, okay. The other thing on your skin that a lot of people don't really know is a lot of people, I think, have issues with chicken skin on the back of their yes. arms, also known as keratosis pilaris. A lot of times that is linked to dairy as well. So if you're noticing that, try cutting out dairy for a couple of weeks and see if it clears up. And I, I would say probably 90% of the time at least people find that their yeah. chicken skin gets better after they've cut out dairy. It's kind of crazy. Even like eczema and psoriasis. I yeah. know one of my nieces had really bad eczema and once she cut out, I think it was eggs and a couple other things that she was, eggs and dairy I think was actually mm -hmm. the other thing then it, it cleared up. And it was something that, you know, all the like topical creams and medication and all that couldn't really fix. It wasn't until she removed the food. Yeah, it's crazy how much that diet plays in our, in our lifestyle and our skin and overall health, but yeah. there's a definite link there. Yes, yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess the other thing we wanted to talk about then is like how do we, what do we do then during the holidays? And I always advise people just to first think about like how important is it to you to clear up the skin issue you're dealing with? Because this time of year is difficult and unless you're like on a scale of one to 10, you're at like a nine or 10, it's really important to take care of it. Then most likely you're probably not gonna be able to avoid all dairy and all sugar and all alcohol during the holidays. So I think that's the first thing is just getting realistic with ourselves about how important it is to you and if you're willing to really do some experimentation this time of year. Um, for everyone though, I think there's some really simple things that we can do to really create a holiday plan that, that won't um, completely wreck our skin or completely sabotage it. So I, you know, I always just recommend being really intentional. So if you are going to have something with sugar or dairy or alcohol or just something you don't normally have, just really be intentional about it. Don't give yourself permission to just have free reign until January, but just decide in advance, okay, I'm going to have one piece of pumpkin pie. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to savor it and then move on. So I think a lot of times it's easy to be in that downward spiral where once we have one piece of pie and then it leads to the whole pie and then it leads to, you know, a week or really until New Year's Eve of or like leftovers sitting in the fridge. I have yes. about four dessert leftovers in my fridge right now that I'm like, okay, I can't eat that. Yeah. Like I'm sending it to work with people. Like you got to get yeah. it out of the house. 
Yeah, I mean, if we just splurged on Thanksgiving Day, maybe Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and New Year's Eve, mm-hmm. I mean, really, there's a lot of days in between that we can eat healthy and and really nourish our skin. So, so yeah, I think as long as we're being intentional and not giving ourselves that permission to just do whatever we want, I think, I don't know, a lot of people have that attitude, well, I'll just worry about it in January, um, and then we end up a lot worse off than where we are now. So, so that's one recommendation that I have. Um, another one would just be like Karen was saying, be mindful how much sugar you're consuming on a regular basis. I have, well, I had one client who we were starting to like assess how much sugar he was eating on a regular basis. And he noticed that the multivitamin he was taking that was recommended to him by a medical professional actually had, I think it was 12 grams of sugar in it. So every single day he was getting in an extra 10, 10, 12 grams of sugar. Plus, he started looking at his salad dressings and all these other foods that had extra sugar. And so, just by being aware of how sugar's creeping in on a regular basis and eliminating that, then it it doesn't do as much damage when you enjoy a piece of pie later on. So that's one tip I had. And then the other one, like uh, Karen said, is just to drink a lot of water because, I mean, obviously it's great for our skin, but also a lot of times when we have cravings for sugar, it's because we're dehydrated. So getting plenty of water, getting enough protein and fat and fiber in your meals so that those cravings go down, it makes it a lot easier to stick with eating healthy um, during the holidays and just keeping it to only one or two desserts here and there. Um, i trying to think if I have any other tips. Those are probably my main ones. I also do, every year I put together like a roundup of healthier holiday recipes. A lot of them are just like our typical traditional holiday recipes that are a little bit healthier. They use more natural forms of sugar like honey or maple syrup. All of them are gluten-free. I'm pretty sure they're all dairy-free, except there might be butter in a couple of them. Um, So if you want that roundup, I think it's got like 30 plus recipes, links to recipes all over. They're ones that I've tested out or am going to be testing out this year. So if you're interested in that, you can just let me know your email address in the comments. If you're already on my email address, I will be emailing that out to you probably tomorrow. Um, so, So yeah, let me know if you want that healthy recipe, healthy holiday recipe roundup. And I know before we came live today, we had one person submit a question in advance. So I thought you could address that. Um, The question was, what scrubs would you recommend to exfoliate older skin that's on the dry side with redness and rosacea? That is a great question. Um, So we talked about rosacea being a link um, to possible dairy, other things in your diet. So I would definitely kind of address that redness um, from the inside out. I've done an elimination diet with Christina and I definitely recommend them. Um, That is a good way to start, but all skin needs exfoliation. That's what's gonna help it look glowy and healthy and all that good stuff. So with you having um, older skin, I would almost steer clear of a scrub because you do have that rosacea, especially if your rosacea is flaring up and you may have those little tiny white heads on it. You really don't wanna break Mm -hmm. those open and spread it around. Um, So maybe looking to an exfoliant that has um, like a gentle fruit enzyme that's going to be more of an enzymatic exfoliation versus the physical exfoliation with a scrub. You're still going to get rid of that dull dead skin and have your skin nice and glowing without irritating your rosacea more. So fruit enzyme exfoliant would be. And if you find that, like where do you find that? um, I have a couple that I really like. Um, So if you want more detailed... um, detailed uh, product recommendations, feel free to email me or reach out to my page, Simply Skin Omaha, and I'd be happy to point you in the direction. I also always do complimentary consultations, so if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of it, I'm happy to nerd out and share all my knowledge with you. That's awesome. Thanks. If anyone else has any skin-related questions, feel free to put them in the comments. We're happy to, well, Karen's happy to answer (laughs) them. I can't answer too many of those. Were you, are you able to see if we have I'm any? I'm looking. I don't know that we do have okay. any right now coming Good. in, but yeah, if people have questions. Yeah, so yeah. if you have anything, know. put it in the comments. I also wanted to mention, so like I said, during the holidays, it may not be the optimal time to really try and figure out what's going on with your skin. You can definitely do things like avoid or reduce sugar, reduce alcohol to make it easier. 
But like Karen mentioned in the elimination diet, that is probably kind of the gold standard way to figure out what's going on with your skin and a lot of areas of your health, whether it's um, aches and pains, digestive issues. And so the idea with an elimination diet is that you spend usually three or four weeks and you just remove the foods that are most problematic. So when I do this with people, we remove gluten, dairy, corn, soy, sugar, alcohol, peanuts is the other one. I think those are the seven things we, oh, and nightshades. So when you just get those foods out of your system for three to four weeks, you kind of reestablish a new baseline. Most people find that they feel a lot better and people are surprised. Most people don't do this challenge because they're trying to improve their skin, but it's always amazing that people do notice that their skin is a little bit more glowing or the acne starts to clear up or it just is looking better, looking more youthful. Um, but anyway, so after you remove those foods for three to four weeks, then you reintroduce them one at a time. And so for example, you could reintroduce dairy and wait for a few days and just see if it, re it brings up any acne or any other issues. And so that's a really great way for you to be able to pinpoint which foods are bothering you. Because, you know, I know that, I mean, dairy might be bothering you, but it may not bother somebody else. And so it's really helpful just to figure out what are the trigger foods for you. And then you can decide. It doesn't mean if dairy bothers you, doesn't mean you can never have dairy. But you know, like, okay, if you have a special event coming up and you want to make sure you're not breaking out, then you know that you're going to avoid all dairy for the, the couple weeks ahead of time. So I think that's kind of the benefit is just, like, getting that knowledge and being able to figure out what's going on. Yeah. I would definitely agree. I think, like you said, spot on. Like, if you know dairy's going to bother you and you've got a wedding or, you know, a party yeah. or something, just cut it out for a couple of weeks. You'll probably feel less bloated, too, and feel yeah. even better. That's <laughs> true. There's, yeah, because like we said, if dairy's bothering your skin, it's probably bothering digestion or, you know, some something else as well. All right, so do you have any last thoughts about anything or last tips to share? I would just say, you know, with the holidays coming up, it gets stressful. Try not to turn to food as your yeah. stress reliever and your skin will thank you for it. The rest of your body will probably thank you for it. And again, I'm happy to consult with anybody that has any questions about their skin. I'd love to nerd out on it. So, yeah. yeah. Yes, and Karen is great. I can say I... I think, I don't know, I probably had like six, over a span of six to nine months, had several facials with her, and I could definitely notice a difference in my skin when I was doing that. It, yeah, I did, I don't even, I, okay, so I always thought that like getting a facial was just about like more pampering and self care, which it is, it's mm -hmm. amazing for that, but I never really thought about how much benefit it does to the skin and complexion, and so, and again, because Karen takes that holistic approach, it's just, is really helpful overall. So definitely if you're in the Omaha area, reach out to Karen. Um, and if you have any questions for me, make sure you like my Facebook page. And if you want the Healthy Holidays Recipe Roundup, just send me a message with your email address and I'll make sure you get that as well. So thanks so much for joining us. If you have any questions, we'll check back in for the next day or two. So if you have anything else you want to add or comment on, just feel free to post that below. Have a great day. Thanks guys, happy Thanksgiving.